This presentation, Cancer Conference, is sponsored by the National Cancer Registrar's Association Education Foundation. During this presentation, we will discuss the purpose and benefits of having cancer conferences, identify the COC Cancer Conference requirements, and explain the cancer conference coordinators and the cancer registrar's role in these requirements. You will also be able to watch a few minutes of a cancer conference in action. The National Cancer Institute defines a cancer conference or tumor board as a treatment planning approach in which a number of doctors who are experts in different specialties review and discuss the medical condition and treatment options of a patient. A cancer conference provides the opportunity to have a multidisciplinary discussion about current diagnosis and treatment standards with patients' well-being and care as the primary focus. The goal of the discussion is to determine the best possible treatment plan for the patient. Cancer conference meetings also provide ongoing education for physicians and ancillary staff. The benefits of holding cancer conferences are an overall improvement in the management of patient care and identifying opportunities within the program to improve cancer patient care. Cancer conference meetings center around actual patient case scenarios. For each patient case, members present and discuss the patient's history of illness, radiologic imaging studies, pathology slides, and lab results, cancer stage, prognostic factors related to the site of the cancer, possible treatments, evidence-based national treatment guidelines, clinical trial eligibility, possible referrals to other services such as rehab, palliative care, genetics, psychosocial services or hospice are also discussed. The discussion is open to all present. The Cancer Register has a major role in cancer conferences as many may coordinate case presentations and meeting arrangements. They also ensure that cancer references, manuals, and treatment guidelines are available to meeting participants. This may include guidelines established by the National Comprehensive Cancer Network American Society of Clinical Oncology, or American College of Radiation Oncology, to name a few. Cancer registrars must record specific information to meet Commission on Cancer's cancer conference standards. This usually consists of a cancer conference grid or grids that consist of the presenting physician and cancer site, the percentage of prospective case presentations, Prospective cases include newly diagnosed patients that have not had treatment initiated, newly diagnosed patients that treatment has been initiated but discussion of additional treatment is needed, and previously diagnosed patients where first course of treatment has been completed but discussion of treatment for recurrence and cancer progression is needed. Cancer registrars must also maintain documentation of the AJCC cancer stage, prognostic indicators, treatment planning, and use of evidence-based national guidelines for applicable cases. If a patient is eligible for clinical trial or trials, an attendance record of each discipline that participated in the meeting. The Cancer Conference Coordinator is appointed each calendar year and is a required member of the Cancer Committee. The Cancer Conference Coordinator is responsible for monitoring the Cancer Conference activity. He or she will report findings to the Cancer Committee at least annually and recommend corrective action if activity falls below the annual goal or requirements. A cancer registrar can be appointed to fulfill the cancer conference coordinator role. Many healthcare professionals can participate in cancer conferences. However, many of these professionals are required by the COC to attend a certain percentage of meetings. These required professionals include physicians from the following disciplines, pathology, radiology, surgery, medical oncology, and radiation oncology. There are several different types of cancer conferences that a facility can offer. Facility-wide or general conferences are open to all cancer types being discussed. For example, one cancer conference meeting could include a melanoma case, a colon case, and a lung case. Departmental conferences focus on specialty departments such as GYN, GI, or head and neck. Site-specific conferences only review one site, such as a breast or lung cancer. Seeing an actual cancer conference in session really demonstrates its benefits. Let's take a few minutes to view a recording of a cancer conference at Torrance Memorial Medical Center in Torrance, California. 
Every week, a group of Torrance Memorial physicians, oncologists, surgeons, radiologists, and other specialists gather to review cancer cases. Known as the Tumor Board, its goal is to offer a consensus on the best treatment for patients with cancer. Well, what we try to do in the Tumor Board is have what we call a multidisciplinary approach. So we have, we present different oncology cases or patients with different types of cancer, and we have multiple different specialties here. Because in fact, the Tumor Board is composed of multiple specialists, radiologists, pathologists, the surgeons and the plastic surgeons who will talk about the best way to possibly remove the tumor, and then the radiation therapists and oncologists. And so basically, it is a multi-specialty group. And it allows them to get together and uh, review the radiographic films, pathology slides. A lot of times, these doctors don't have the ability to actually see the pathology. They get our reports, but this allows them an opportunity to, to see the pathology and use that in conjunction with the radiology. There was a brain MRI which was negative, so the PET scan shows very promising. We started this many, many years ago. It is now a requirement in terms of certification, but we have been doing it for many years before that. What we try to do at the Tumor Board is, is basically uh, look at a variety of cases, some of them relatively straightforward cases, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. The other type of case that we look at is more of these unusual cases where it's an atypical tumor type or a case where there may be two or three or more approaches to this. It's nice to have a panel come together and give their input from all of these different disciplines and try to come up with a consensus answer from everyone. The tumor board is divided into two parts. The first part is strictly breast cancer. The second part is virtually any other type of tumor and at the request of the, of the patient's doctor will be put on the agenda to be discussed. For the general tumor board, we don't at this point look at every case prospectively just because of the sheer volume. We see a lot of different cases and what we've tried to do now is sort of make individual tumor boards on a weekly basis. So on the first and third Thursdays of the month, we look at thoracic or chest or lung cases. So we have a panel of lung surgeons and medical oncologists and radiation doctors and pulmonologists as well that look at these cases and we all come to a consensus on the challenging cases. How do we manage this? How do we treat this particular patient? And need to, um, we need to come to some consensus because there's no one right answer. This gives the patient an opportunity to have the benefit of multiple physicians of many different specialties in the hospital who are thinking about only their case and will render an opinion about the best treatment to their doctors. So by presenting cases here you are getting a second or a third or a fourth opinion if you will and so that should give patients some peace of mind that their case has really been looked at by a lot of people. Now you have seen how physicians share their knowledge on the diagnostic findings and treatment options for cancer patients. A special thank you to facilities that have tools for educational needs like Torrance Memorial. If a hospital has multiple facilities or clinics, it may conduct a virtual cancer conference via conference calls, web conferences, and or video conferences. A virtual cancer conference may be a key educational tool for networks, small facilities, and clinics. With internet access to software like GoToMeeting, WebEx, and Zoom, arrangements can be easily made to hold virtual cancer conferences. A cancer conference or tumor board is a multidisciplinary discussion focused on current diagnoses and treatment standards to determine the best possible treatment plan for a patient. The benefit of a cancer conference is to improve overall management of patient care. There are specific physician disciplines that are required to attend a certain percentage of meetings. The Cancer Registrar is a key component of cancer conferences, preparing the information needed for the meeting and recording the required COC documentation. Thank you. This presentation is brought to you by the National Cancer Registrar's Association Education Foundation. For more information on the Education Foundation, go to www.ncraeducationfoundation.org. For more information on the cancer registry profession, go to the NCRA website at www.ncra-usa.org.